Detroit City, better known as the Motor City, home of the Big Three, birthplace of the automobile industry. And you know, while we have design and research and manufacturing plants now all over North America, if you wish to work in the industry or learn of its history, Detroit is still the place to be. And 1996 will mark the centennial celebration of automobile production. We're down here as Ford has its own celebration of history going on as they honor one of the most important selling tools of today's automobile, safety. Good morning, I'm Pam Kieber, the manager of safety communications at Ford and I'd like to be among the first to welcome you today to Ford's 10,000th crash test. It's very rare, if ever, for the media to be invited to view a crash test. But when you're about to crash vehicle number 10,000, the Ford sense history was about to be made and a celebration was in order. It was to be a side impact crash with a new Taurus as the target. But before we witness the event, let's go back to crash number one in 1954. That test featured a 1950 Ford aimed at the side of a 52 Mercury, the speed 10 miles an hour. Things were much simpler then. When we started, we didn't think we were going to be crashing 10,000 vehicles. And our measuring techniques were simple. We could only measure six things at one time. A year and a half later, we could measure 20 things. Things like the forces in the head and then the chest and the vehicle decelerations. And, but it was much simpler. We had tow vehicles to pull a car instead of a track. If there was frost on the ground in the morning, <laughs> but it was going to be a sunny day, you had to wait until perhaps 11 o'clock before you could get the, the frost cleared up and the sun out because you, you couldn't film a, cl a, a crash unless you had good sunshine. The high-speed film required good sunshine and, and so that, that, that was a, a prerequisite. So you couldn't even test vehicles all year round. Um, on rollovers, for example, the fellows would just go to a hill we have next to this building and they would just push the vehicle over and it would tumble on down the hill. So the objective was to protect customers so there, there wasn't any government involved and you, you had the you had techniques we thought of even how airbags could be utilized in 1956 we didn't have the technology yet to deploy them but we knew what they would do if we could find the technology our first barrier cost 15,000 a barrier today cost 4 million just to to have vehicles headed so things have changed not only have the test changed, but so has a consumer's expectations for what they want in a car. The sales platform for the 1956 Ford was the ultimate in safety vehicles. It had padded instrument panel. It had a steering wheel with a deep dish and an energy absorbing steering wheel. It had padded sun visors so that if your head went forward and hit, it wouldn't, wouldn't be injured as readily. It had seat belts, big innovation. And it, 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 for, the, for the dollar of use, it was probably the most significant safety advance of its time. People weren't interested in it. They turned off. The, the sales marketing people said safety doesn't sell, and it really didn't at that time. I, I think uh, selling a car without safety features today is, is almost impossible because the desire for safety cuts across demographic lines. It's, it's whether it's men or women or young and old. Um, now, that's not to say that customers don't want other things in their car. They do, but uh, other things being equal, the car that offers them greater safety is the one they'll choose. Customers' interest in safety is part of the same thing that has caused people to quit smoking and, and to not drink and drive and, and to exercise and, you know, to eat in a more healthy way, so it's, it's part of a broader societal uh, phenomenon, I think. So the crash is successful, the airbag deployed. But is all this emphasis on passive safety giving drivers a false sense of security? Unfortunately, uh, there might be some truth in that. I think there are people that take chances once they're belted in and they have airbags. But the number of lives for a million vehicles driven, the number of lives lost continues to drop. When I was in safety in 1956, 50,000 people died a year. With twice as many vehicles covering twice as many miles, we're down about 34,000 fatalities per year. So it has worked. 